So you're going to need to go to the Water Quality Parameters Quest. This first link here will take you to Google Classroom. Log in with your Google account and find the Water Quality Research Notes assignment. That's a graphic organizer to help you organize all your notes on turbidity. Now clicking on this link to go to the following website, I have, if you scroll down, you're going to find some websites to help you totally understand turbidity. Now I'm going to right click here and open link in a new tab so that I can go to the web page on turbidity and still have another tab open with the other links. So this web page is, is going to tell you a lot about what turbidity is. You already know it's how cloudy the water is. The clearer the water is, the lower NTUs, the cloudier the water is, the higher. Another way to refer to cloudy water is turbid water. That's where the word turbidity came from. So turbid water appears cloudy, murky, or otherwise uh, colored. It affects the way the water looks. Turbidity is the one you can see with your eyes. Now turbidity measurements are often used as an indicator of water quality, like we did, uh, and to estimate the number of total suspended solids, stuff that's in there. So like your sensor did, it's measured by the amount of light scattered by particles in the water. As light shoots through, if there's stuff in there, it's going to bounce back, and the more it bounces back, the higher the NTU. That'll scatter more light. Um, now, turbidity is not a direct measurement of the total suspended materials in water. It's just how clear it is. So it doesn't tell you how much junk is in there. It's just tell you whether it's clear or cloudy. Turbidity can come from suspended sediment. Sediment can refer to silt or clay or even inorganic materials uh, uh, such as different types of sand or bits of rock. Organic materials such as algae, plankton, and decaying material can also make the water cloudy or murky. Um, turbidity can also include colored uh, dissolved organic matter, that's CDOM, fluorescent dissolved organic matter, and other dyes. That's from water pollution. Now, a human stain, which is weird why they call this human, is produced from decaying plants and leaves, and it gives water its brownish color, like our creek is kind of yellowish brown. And that comes from the release of tannins from the woody debris and, and all the, the leaves and stems that are falling into the creek and, and the tannins are leaching out of it from the water. Now water clarity is a physical characteristic because we can see it. We'll be able to see through the water and if you have about a foot of water and you can see the bottom of that creek bed, you know that water's really clear. I'm going to scroll down here past this one. Now another reason that water clarity is good, especially if there's plants in the water, is that clearer water, the sunlight can go farther. And if sunlight reaches plants, they can photosynthesize and put more oxygen in the water, especially uh, all the way at the bottom of, of the creek. So that's important. Now turbidity are, are some of the most important visible indicators of water quality because if you see a creek or a stream or a lake that's really cloudy and and brown and it's not from algae or an algal bloom or red tide or things like that um, that's considered a problem that tells you whoa there's something going on there so excessive suspended sediment can impair water quality for aquatic life and human life and impede navigation and increase flooding ranks. Uh, <clears throat> let me repeat that. Increase flooding risks. Now, this type of cloudy water or turbid water can come from soil erosion, runoff, discharges, stirred bottom sediments, or even algal blooms. Now, high levels of suspended solids in the water will increase the temperature, 
And if you talk to your temperature people, that's bad. And it decreases dissolved oxygen. You talk to your dissolved oxygen teammates or people in the class, that's bad. And here's the thing. Suspended particles in the water absorb more heat than the water itself, and that's why it causes the water temperature to rise and to make the water warmer. It can also, turbidity can inhibit photosynthesis, like I just mentioned, because the sun can't get to the plants. Now, seeing cloudy sediments in the water can also be an indication that there's erosion happening somewhere. So that could be how people find out that, that there's uh, uh, stream banks are getting wider and they can fix it before it becomes a problem. Planting trees will hold that soil in place. And if people are cutting down trees in a riparian zone, this, seeing the water turbidity increase, could warn them that this is happening. Of course, if the turbidity is coming from uh, pollution, then that's an important thing to catch real quick so you can tell where it's coming from and put a stop to it. So these are some important uh, uh, reasons why we measure turbidity every year. And then you've got a section here on human concerns so you can answer that part of your uh, uh, graphic organizer on Google Classroom. So up to human concerns is a good place to stop on this one. And then we're going to go to stream sediments. Stream sediments uh, has really good information for you. So as you can tell, clearer water is better for salmon. So in a healthy stream, young salmon and trout hide in, in spaces between cobbles and boulders to avoid getting eaten. But in streams that get extremely cold in winter, young steelhead may actually burrow into the stream bed and spend the winter in flowing water down within the gravel. The area of the stream where flowing water extends down into the gravel is also extremely important for aquatic invertebrates, which supply most of the food for that fish that's hiding in there. Now, if the fine sedimentation is clogging these places, they can't hide there they will have a lower chance of survival. So that's why low turbidity is really important for the young uh, alvin, uh, especially when they become fry and they're leaving their red, R-E-D-D, -D, which means nest. Your salmon experts will know that. So this tells you more about the salmon and how turbidity affects them at the, uh, uh, when they get bigger. Um, so these two are really important for you to read and include that in your notes. And I think up at these two paragraphs are, are good enough. Then going to turbidity one. I know they were all called turbidity, so I just numbered them in no order of importance. This has just a different definition of turbidity from Wikipedia. I thought uh, it might help. So read that, see what you think. And you can come up with your own definition that includes all of these put together, maybe. Just put it into your own words. Now, this web page has an interesting chart here that shows from hours to days to weeks to months and the turbidity and NTUs and how it affects fish. So I like this big oval here, which is death. So let's see. In days to weeks, anything above, let's see, close to 100,000 NTU. Yeah, who knew NTU could get that big? 100,000 will kill fish. Well, that sounds like a pretty big duh. Um, but you can see reduced growth can happen at, yeah, close to 100,000 NTUs within hours to a day. They don't have to be in that turbid of water for very long to suffer. Um, but if they're in there for months, even something with 10 NTU could cause long-term reduction in feeding success. So that's how you read this. Now, delayed hatching rates, it's in the middle here, from days to weeks in water that's 1,000 NTU. So if the water's clearer, it's great. 
So down here, um, near zero, fish just are not affected. Fish started to show signs of stress when it gets up to about 100 NTU. And then uh, 10 NTU even, they seem to show signs of stress. I guess it depended on what was dissolved in there. But you can read this to let you know more about this chart. This has got some great information that you should include on your poster and in your presentation and on your website. So in turbidity number three has questions and answers. So check this out. If you have these questions, you got your answers right there. I thought this would help in your study of turbidity. And then turbidity number four, the last one on my list, uh, tells you about the monitoring and assessing water quality. Uh, this one is just extra. If you don't get to it, no problem. It's all right. Well, hopefully this will give you enough information to really teach uh, turbidity and, and explain how Chimicum Creek is doing with our turbidity, turbidity levels.